Hello everyone, my name is Anitsu, and I'm back with another DigiFinance video. So, hopping back uh, over to UUTI, looking at their bi-monthly sales uh, articles uh, for the time period of uh, July 1st through July 14th, we can definitely see that uh, the Japanese meta is uh, attempting to change a little bit, but for the most part, it's been staying the same and stable, and people are just trying to come up with uh, new and interesting tech and tools to utilize uh, for what they've been doing, and uh, the uh, sales for each of the best-selling cards in each of the different rarities kind of reflects that a little bit. So, going over the article, starting with the best-selling SR, we have Dynasmon. So, Dynasmon, before, wasn't really seeing a whole lot of play, but he's uh, seeing a little bit more play here and there because of what this card is doing and how decks utilize his abilities. So, his first ability is when you digivolve up into him, you get to discard one card from your security stack to look at the top six cards of your deck and then add up to two Digimon that are level six or lower into your hand and then the rest to go into the trash. So, this is pretty good considering it's a good way of filling up the trash. It adds up potentially up to two Digimon into your hand and on top of which you're getting rid of a security, which depending on the deck may or may not matter. And then on top of which, he has another ability where during all turns, once per turn, when your security is reduced, if we have three or less security, then we get to recover one. So if we put ourselves uh, with his ability at low enough security, then he's just going to be replacing the card that uh, we just discarded. So he could be a pretty decent and pretty interesting yellow Digimon to be building around, and there's a couple of decks that could utilize him. So hopping over to some of the Japanese data, we could see that there is a increase in yellow decks during this time period. Yellow is definitely seeing a lot more play as reflected by this graph. And if we look at what yellow decks are being played, we could see for the most part, it's still just a lot of just random mishmash, but we could take a look and see that Dynasmon is seeing more and more play in both War Greymon decks and Crusadermon decks. And if we also look at what hybrid decks are doing with him, he is also a card that people are considering for security control. So he is seeing some experimental play, and that experimental play is bringing a lot more attention onto him, and thus why he's probably being the best-selling SR during this time period, especially since this is the later part of the Japanese meta for BT-06, considering the Classic Collection is just on the horizon for them. Next up, we have the best-selling rare during this time period, and it's looking to be Rebellimon. So, Rebellimon is a pretty decent Digimon just because he is a rather unique Digimon, considering he is the bridge or transition card to a uh, purple and a black deck. He has a, a really decent ability where when you Digivolve into him, you get to discard one card from your hand, and this Digimon gains uh, blocker and retaliation until the end of the opponent's uh, turn. So uh, this is just a pretty good at uh, just creating a uh, nice blocker that the opponent really doesn't want to attack into because it'll also be paired up with the retaliation ability to delete whatever Digimon it's going to be blocking. And then on top of that, uh, discarding a card is really good for both uh, black and uh, purple considering uh, they both have cards that, that want to interact with uh, cards being in their trash. So he's a good setup card uh, for just uh, setting up the trash or just using them as a way of discarding cards. Cards, and he even has a really unique ability where during both players' turns while he's on the field, this Digimon counts as both a purple and a black Digimon. So he's just purple natively, but he gets treated as black for his ability, and this could interact with the decoy mechanic, which triggers during the opponent's turn. So it just is a pretty decent card to be utilizing all around, and uh, we could see that he has been seen in a couple of different decks, and uh, he is a really decent card to be playing around with it for those decks in the Japanese meta. So hopping over to the Japanese metadata, we could see that purple is in decent numbers and black hasn't really been doing a whole lot. Black has just always been one of the lowest performing colors, uh, but uh, we could see here that black is still performing relatively decently, and so is purple, and uh, Rebellimon's representation in the overall meta is pretty decent, considering he's been played in a couple of different variants of Titamon, and then he also is a considered card to be played in Black Blockers with Craniumon, and on top of that, he also is in a couple of hybrid decks uh, in the form of Three Musketeers to act as both that black and purple card, because... Uh, 
Three Musketeers uses uh, black, purple, and red. So he definitely is looking to be a pretty decent card to be playing around with, and as such, that's probably contributing to why he is the best-selling rare during this time period. Next, on to the best-selling uncommon during this time period, we have Bibimon. So Bibimon is a uh, Digitama with the nice inheritable ability of when attacking once per turn, when your security is exactly at three, then you get to increase your memory by one. So this is a pretty interesting Digitama to be playing around with because it specifically needs your security to be at three in order to do anything, but uh, Yellow really just wants to be at three security exactly all the time anyway, so it's not like it's that big of a downside, and Yellow has some easy ways of getting themselves to be at three and consistently stay at three, so Bibimon's ability could be triggered possibly uh, at a lot of different stages in the game, just making him a pretty decent Digitama to be thinking about playing around with. And then as far as Yellow's overall representation in uh, the uh, BT-06 meta currently in Japan, as we've seen before, it is currently on the incline, and the graph definitely shows that Yellow took a huge spike in terms of uh, how many decks are being played, and we could see with what's being played in Yellow, that uh, Bibimon is a considered card to be playing around with for a couple of different decks. So Wargreymon is one possible deck that is used. So it's not like it's the worst uh, Digitama in the world to be utilizing. It's just not necessarily the greatest. But the fact that he is seeing more attention and because it is getting later and later in the BT-06 meta for Japan, a lot of people already have their cards, so they're not looking to pick up as many cards. So any cards that people are considering about picking up stands out more and more. And then the best-selling common on uh, this list is looking to continue to be Eosmon. So I've covered this before in a couple of my previous videos on why Eosmon is going to be the best-selling common, and it basically just boils down to the ability where you could include up to 50 of her in your deck. So uh, if your average card you only need four of, that means you only need to buy up to four copies, but with this version of Eosmon, you need to buy more than four, which means any player that's looking to pick up the Eosmon deck or play the Eos Mon deck is going to have to buy more of this common versus any of the other commons and uh, just the culmination of all those players buying up all of those commons just to add up to Eos Mon being the best selling common just because of this first part of the ability. But the unfortunate thing is looking at the Japanese metadata, green has been on the decline for quite a while. I think green just didn't get a whole lot of good cards in BT-06, and that's just contributing to why green is on the decline and why it's not performing as well as some of the other decks, just because of that factor where it's power level just is a lot lower because of the cards that it got in BT-06 don't really help what green was doing and really don't push green forward as a color compared to some of the power level of the other cards and the other colors and the other colors level of support. So while it is rather unfortunate, that's just what happens uh, when they decided to design archetypes uh, within certain colors, and that's a big contributing factor to why black hasn't been performing so well, is because the level of generic tools that they have compared to a lot of the other colors are a lot lower, just because they kept splitting each of uh, the support that they were getting between generic tools and uh, archetype-specific support cards. So uh, that's the unfortunate side effect, and with BT-06 being all about Eosmon, that's just what happened, where green just really didn't get almost anything on a generic basis outside of, like, Arbormon and uh, the hybrid support for green. And then outside of that, they literally just got Eosmon, and that was kind of it. So green definitely took a huge dive just because the amount of cards that they got that helped the color meaningfully out were just a lot less compared to a lot of the other colors. And we could see that being reflected in the metadata and how people are playing the color. And if we even look at what decks people are playing in green, for the most part, it is uh, just uh, Ancient Troymon, which is basically following off of the Digiburst stuff anyway, which is from BT05. So it's not like Eosmon is super competitive anyway, but Eosmon is a really decent casual deck, and people are probably picking it up just because it is a nice casual deck that could still do something. It's just, again, in the grand scheme of things on how the meta is being played, whatever Eosmon in green is doing just isn't quite good enough in this meta. 
And then hopping over to the English side of the market, we could see that for the most part, cards are stabilizing and leveling out. Some cards are subject to spike due to uh, popularity of certain decks that are going to be coming out in the future. So people are buying the cards while they're low. And then because everyone's buying the cards while they're low, it just slowly will increase uh, the card's price. Unless it's a buyout, then that'll be a more dramatic spike. But regardless, the average price of a lot of the cards are going down, especially as more and more stores are getting restocks and reprints of the products that we currently have out. And then in terms of singles, where a lot of the money is going to be going towards, it is going to be going towards the alt arts and promos. So as we could see with the promos here, that a lot of the promos are holding a rather high price tag. Some of it is due to a little bit of overhype. Some of it is due to buyout. Some of it is just due to lack of overall stock and quantity. So we could see like with the event promos that, that uh, these are really highly priced cards. And and uh, the price to enter the tournament was only like uh, 25 to 30 bucks. So reasonably, that's what at least the entry level promo should be. But uh, the fact that there's just so few sellers and uh, people just really wanted the cards that couldn't participate made the price uh, go up. So once more of these cards uh, come into the secondary market from all of the events that were happening in July then more of some of these promos are going to be in stock. So I would definitely wait uh, for more of those cards to be in stock towards the end of July, early August. When people actually get these cards, then they'll see this price tag and try to sell it off because uh, BTO5 will have a common version of this and you don't need the alt arts or promos to play. But uh, regardless, uh, people try to sell them off just because the price tag is high. And then as more sellers... Uh, throw their cards on the secondary market, it'll go back down, and then people will be more inclined to buy them up, and then it'll slowly go back up. So that's just kind of how the secondary market works with stuff like this, and uh, we could see that even harder to get cards are going to be holding a higher price tag, and then uh, with some of the other promos, uh, some of the other promos really haven't been doing or moving a whole lot, but some of them did where we had a spike in the Diabormon promo just because uh, Diabormon is getting support in BT05. But just as a word of warning, the Diabormon deck in BT05 does not need this card, and this card really doesn't make that deck any better. So I would personally, if you're not a collector wanting just to have a playset of all the cards, if you don't really feel like you need to spend the money on this card, then don't. If you do want to buy the card just because you do think it could be useful, then go ahead, pick it up. It's only going to be going down from here as people are going to be trying to sell off their cards. And we could see that the current market price and the listings definitely are reflecting that it is on a slight decline. But I don't think it's going to go back to the $50, $40 that it was before the spike. And then if we just continue to look at some of the other promos and what they're doing, we could see that for the most part, some of them are stabilizing or increasing just because uh, these promos, for the most part, are once they're gone from the secondary market, they're kind of just gone because there's no new wave of these cards coming in. So something like Pulsemon is a highly played staple in a lot of yellow decks. So uh, the more he was getting played, the more people want him, and the more people need him, the higher the price he's going to have just because there's going to be less stock of this card overall, just because of how good he is and how many decks he can go into. And then the same is kind of said for a couple of the other promos, where it's like the Karamon promo is uh, only increasing in price just because of the Diabormon deck. But again, you don't necessarily need this card to play the new Diabormon deck, but it is definitely a nice card to have nonetheless, just because it is a Karamon. And then the Devimon promo is good for the Dan Devimon deck. The Infermon is another card where you don't need it for the Diabormon deck, just because because I think the uh, new uh, black stuff uh, and the new Infermon and the Wermanzimon are just better cards to be playing overall than hard playing this Infermon. But this Infermon is good for other decks like Megazoo just to have a level 7 that hard plays and does something. Then as far as some of the other promos, you have the uh, Palmon, which is another really good card for a lot of Digiburst based decks, which Green is going to be continuing to play Digiburst all the way up through BT06. 
They'll probably be playing it uh, through Classic Collection as well, just because Classic Collection doesn't give Green that many good new tools. It does add a couple of new tools to try to change up the deck a little bit, but for the most part, uh, Green Digiburst is looking to be the prominent strategy for quite some time. And uh, we could see with some of the other promos that they are just stabilizing to a more normal level and decreasing with a couple of other exceptions. So Kurosarimon is just, again, another card that fits into the Diobormon deck, but you don't need it. Gomamon is a card that got a lot of hype and speculation just because of Hexablaumon being a really popular deck. And then, like I said, a lot of the other promos are just stabilizing to a more reasonable level, whether that's a slight increase or a slight decrease. But as I mentioned before, a lot of the cards just are on the decline on an average basis with a couple of exceptions. So Lilithmon is another one of those exceptions just because a lot of people are very excited for the Lilithmon loop deck. Even though that deck isn't necessarily going to be super top tier hyper competitive, it's still just a fun deck that when it goes off it feels very nice. And as such, that's why she's holding a pretty high price tag because of all that hype and speculation. And then a lot of the alt arts, like I said, are going to be where the majority of the money is and uh, for the most part we could just see a lot of the cards just uh, decrease and stabilize over time so millennium on definitely had a huge spike all the way up to fifty dollars and now he's stabilizing back down to 35 as uh, people are realizing that oh there's more cards that are going to be coming out that are level seven for black and purple i don't necessarily need my millennium ons so i'm going to be selling it off and that type of mentality is seen through a lot of the other cards minus a couple of others so ancient guru mon is another card that saw a huge spike over time just because that the ancient Gururumon deck is actually looking to be pretty good in BTO5 and the uh, Gabumon Bond of Friendship deck uses him in BTO6 so he's definitely a really good card to pick up unlike ancient Greymon uh, where ancient Greymon hasn't really been performing super great so he's just been on the decline. And then let's not forget that BT05 is just a couple of weeks away, and we could see that the full set has been spoiled, and as a result, all of the cards are up on TCG Player. So any shop that is allowed to do pre-sale is already listing them, and I would 110% avoid buying any of these cards on pre-sale. All of them are overhyped, all of them are overpriced. There's going to be so much BTO5 that we won't even know what to do with it, and these cards are going to drop dramatically with a couple of exceptions. I already made a video kind of going over like where cards prices should be in terms of uh, the SRs uh, and uh, a lot of the like rares and stuff are also extremely overpriced right now. So uh, like there's no reason why this is going to be $8. It's probably going to be like a dollar at most uh, when the set actually releases. So 110% avoid the secondary market on presale when it comes to BT05 just because everything is looking to be hyper overinflated and they're just trying to capitalize on your fear of missing out. But don't worry, there is probably going to be plenty of stock to go around. And considering we already know that the pull rates are going to be the same as uh, Special Booster 1.5, where you're going to be getting seven SRs and uh, two uh, alt arts slash secrets, like, we know that uh, based on uh, Special Booster 1.5, what the prices of these cards are going to be like. So, again, uh, I would 100% reference my video to kind of, like, get a more realistic expectation on what some of the high-end cards are going to be performing like. I don't know how the alt arts are going to be performing. Those are kind of, like, the only things that are up in the air. But I kind of did a nice breakdown of uh, my expectations on what BT05 is going to be doing. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below, and down in the description below are different ways that you could support me in the channel. So one of those ways is I do have a TCG Player affiliate link, so whenever you use that affiliate link to buy cards off of tcgplayer.com, then some of the money will go to supporting me in the channel. And on top of which, I also do stream over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu. So following and subbing is a good way to support me over on that platform as well. And on top of that, I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers uh, on Facebook. So whenever you buy one of my designs through them, then some of that money will also help go to supporting me in the channel. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next video.